We've talked about the flux going through flat surfaces, through slanted surfaces, and through curved surfaces. But there's one more trick we need to look at, which is closed surfaces. A closed surface is something like the surface of a sphere or a lump. So it's actually a surface that completely is enclosed. So maybe you can, like a surface of a potato or some 3D shape. And it turns out there are some very special properties of these closed surfaces and the flux that goes through them. Let's first of all consider a uniform, say, radiation field passing through a closed surface. What is the surface integral? Well, wherever this flux hits the surface, we do the dot product with the normal from the surface. In this case, let's count the normals as pointing outwards everywhere. We could also have them counting inwards everywhere if you like. As long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. So in this case, the normal and the flux are in opposite directions. So you've got a negative value. And then it continues through and out the other side. At this point, they're in the same place. So it has a positive value. And what you can see here is that every ray of light both enters and leaves the closed surface. So if there's no absorption, if the surface is just full of empty space, the amount of radiation going in must equal the amount of radiation going out. So the surface integral all the way around the surface must be zero. So writing that down mathematically, the surface integral of area normal times the intensity vectors equals zero. That's simply because every photon must come in and must go out. Now, does this also apply if you have an area and a non-uniform field? Let's say we had a light bulb right beside it. In that case, there's very intense light hitting this side, whereas the light at the far side is far less intense. But actually, the same thing applies. If this bit of region volume of space is empty, then every photon that enters must leave, so the integral must be zero. And the way to think about it is, down this side here, every particular unit area has a very strong flux of photons through it, but it's a small area. Whereas out here, those same photons are spread over a bigger area, but are less intense. So the flux here, area small, intensity high, and the flux there, area large, intensity low, balance out, cancel out, and give you zero again. So if there is an external light or radiation source shining through a region of empty space, the surface integral is always zero. How about if the light was actually inside? Now that's a different case. If we had a three-dimensional volume and now put the light inside, then that's a different case. Now, in every point on the surface, the photons are going out, The normal vectors, let's also count them in an outward direction. In this case, it's going to add up to a very positive value. So if the light is actually inside the volume, it's very different. So that's telling us that the surface integral A n intensity equals 0 if there are no light sources inside. If there are light sources inside, it's just equal to the luminosity of all the light sources inside, if there's more than one. Now, this applies to radiation. Does it apply to anything else? Well, it wouldn't apply to radiation if it was foggy or if some light was lost going through the surface. Like if you had a real greenhouse and you were shining the light through it, some light would be lost when it came in, so the radiation intensity here would be greater than that here and greater still there. In that case, it wouldn't apply. Another case where it does apply is flow of incompressible fluids, like water. So let's say we have... Uh, a vector field which is the flow of water in some current. Once again you can define some region under the water and you can look at the flux of water into it by looking at the vector field of water flow in times the normal and the vector flow of water outwards times the normals and that tells you the volume of water entering or leaving this region. And as the fluid is incompressible the two must be the same. If water leaves, some must leave, and vice versa. So this whole surface integral, this time of the area times the normal vector times the fluid flow vector, must also equal to zero. 
unless again you had I don't know something a pipe going in here with a nozzle at the end squirting water out in which case not even then actually it would still come to zero because you've got to account for the uh, very large flow of water down the pipe this it turns out is one of the fundamental equations of fluid dynamics how about if we've got sources both inside and outside so let's say we're going back to radiation and we've got some region here if we have a light source inside that will give us light that shines out give us a positive value how about if we added something on the outside so the radiation went through in this case the surface integral is just going to be the sum of the luminosities inside. The ones outside made no difference because the radiation from outside both has to enter and to leave the volume and the two cancel out. So it turns out this is true no matter how many light sources there are and how many are inside and outside. Quite useful for light source but as we'll see far more fundamental and important when it comes to electromagnetism.